All right, guys. So I just heard some really good news about the 6800 XT. Let's take a look. Also, consider subscribing to my channel or at least hitting that like button because that's gonna help me become a lot more visible on the YouTube search algorithms. I just started out this channel covering PCs and tech related content. I'm having a lot of fun with it and help the channel grow, hit those buttons, thank you. All right, now what do I have for you today? Well, I just took a look at a video posted right here on YouTube by Red Gaming Tech and he has some new information for us about how the 6800 XT is actually performing in games. It's looking like this is based on what AMD is probably gonna be revealing on the 28th. And he couldn't give us specific details of exactly how it will perform in each game, but it's looking like they tested it in 10 games at, um, at 4K and at 1440p. And he has average performance for those, including how it stacks up against the 3080. It looks good at 4K, but really good at 1440p. And we'll get more into why that's the case in just a second. But anyway, so how did it do at 4K? Let's start off there, and it looks good. Um, it's specifically getting 90 frames per second on average, averaged out of those 10 games. So we're not saying in each game it got 90 average frames per second, we're saying in the 10 games tested, which we don't know what those games are, um, it was averaging 90 frames per second on average out of those 10. What does that actually mean? To me, that means that it can do 4K gaming very well. Um, and, you know, 90 frames per second is great at 4K. Now, we don't know every little detail about exactly what those settings are and what those games are and all of that. Um, but we do know how it stacks up against the 3080. Apparently, in five of those 10 games, the uh, RX 6800 XT was the cl uh, clear winner over the 3080. In two of them, it was a draw, and in three of them, the 3080 took the lead. So, what does that mean? We definitely know that the 3080 is very good at 4K. And we now know that the 6800 XT can beat that in at least five out of 10, I'm assuming relevant games, considering uh, they're gonna be showcasing these games. Now, of course, they might be also handpicking these games to make sure that they do get that numbers advantage. So we do have to take that into account when analyzing this. But now let's talk about 1440p. So again, tested out of 10 games, guess how many of them the 6800 beats the 3080 in? Well, it looks like eight out of 10. So in eight out of 10 games, it's beating the 3080. So it's sounding like if you're somebody who's gaming at 1440p and you're wondering, should I get the 3080? Should I get the 6800 XT? If you theoretically can find them in stock and have that choice, which one should you pick? Well, it's sounding like at 1440p, the pick might be clearly the 6800. However, again, like I said, these are games that, um, are being selected at for a showcase by AMD. So we do need to consider that uh, when making these judgment calls. They probably would have made sure that they didn't pick 10 games at which they uh, lose a majority to NVIDIA. But it's really looking again with the synthetic benchmarks that we saw the leak for yesterday, uh, that the 6800 in normal rasterized performance, the 6800 XT really is not just a strong competitor to the 3080, but it's looking like it normally has the advantage other than in specific circumstances. Now, what are some of the specific circumstances? Well, definitely ray tracing is a disadvantage for AMD, but I wanna talk about ray tracing for a second. I don't wanna go off on too much of a tangent here, but I really wanna say that I think that Nvidia <laughs> actually had a huge win just by creating the idea that ray tracing is a thing that gamers should care about. And don't get me wrong here, I think ray tracing really looks cool. It is a very useful thing. And also I'm aware in case you misunderstood what I just said that, AM, that Nvidia didn't create ray tracing, but implementing it live in games and hardware supporting it and all that um, is kind of a new thing that M Nvidia is bringing into the gaming market with their 20 series and now really taking off with the 30 series. However, keep in mind that most games 
are still just normal rasterized performance. And imagine what this situation would look like if ray tracing just wasn't considered at all. Instead of getting, getting headlines like the 6800 XT destroys the 3080 in gaming, in like in rasterized performance, but loses by like 22% in ray tracing performance, you would just get the AMD smashes NVIDIA headline, right? So that was a, a good marketing move, I think, by NVIDIA, just bringing that in, bringing in this new thing that they know they're going to have the lead on, because it creates a whole new category on which to compare the cards. But you need to think carefully about if that's a category that you actually care about. How many games do you actually play that feature ray tracing as a major feature that makes a meaningful difference in the game. And there's definitely starting to be more games that do support it. And don't get me wrong, I'm actually a asking you to consider this because you might come down on the side that ray tracing is a big deal to you. You care a lot about it and there are games that are out now or coming out that support it that you really are interested in it specifically using that ray tracing technology. And if that's the case, you really should still be considering going the Nvidia route. However, for a lot of other people, and I might say that this should be the majority of people, the beauty of ray tracing, uh, first of all, isn't always supported that well, although I think that will be getting better now, especially with the new console generation supporting ray tracing, but also um, a lot of times the performance impact you get from enabling ray tracing doesn't really make up for uh, the, the, uh, I mean, let me put it this way. Um, a lot of times I'll be willing to play a game at lesser settings to get a buttery smooth hundred plus frames per second, uh, frame rate, because to me, the game looks and feels better at a higher frame rate, even if I've technically turned some of the settings down and ray tracing has a massive impact on performance. And this 30 series from NVIDIA has done a good job of, of making up for that. So where does AMD actually fall in terms of ray tracing? Well, if you just want the ability to do ray tracing well, AMD has that. Um, it's looking like their ray tracing technology is sitting at about 2080 Ti levels of performance. And think about what that really means. Well, that's definitely much less than NVIDIA's 3080. It's the absolute top end of ray tracing that people were spending over a thousand dollars for in the previous generation. So it's definitely not like if you buy an AMD card, you can't have ray tracing. You will have ray tracing. And think about it again like this, the new console generation having ray tracing support, I think uh, will not only um, increase how many games are supporting it, but they're also going to be supporting it in a way that the AMD RDNA 2 architecture can handle. My cat is messing with my lights right now at my feet. I know you can't see that, but it's really distracting. Anyway, I'll try to keep going here. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so again, I was saying the console generation is supporting ray tracing through AMD technology. New consoles are running on AMD, right? So the games are going to be, because uh, let's face it, most big AAA games are designed with consoles in mind and ported to PC, sometimes really well, sometimes not. And yes, I know some games are PC specific, but many big name games are designed for consoles which are going to be running AMD's RDNA 2 graphics architecture. And if they implement ray tracing, it will be designed to function well on that. So I don't think that the ray tracing ability should be a huge deciding factor in your decision making on this generation of graphics cards, because I think AMD is going to support it well enough that you can have your ray tracing in games where that's really gonna matter to you at a reasonable level of performance, but you are not gonna be getting the absolute top end of ray tracing performance that you would get from Nvidia. Now, when you're getting into, okay, wh which way should you go with all of this? I think the number one thing that's gonna impact it, at least at launch, is just gonna be availability. Uh, I, I don't think you can really go wrong right now with Nvidia's 30 series, or with AMD's lineup based on all the leaks that we're seeing. Um, so I think you can be happy with either card that you pick. 
If price is gonna be a big deal to you, let's talk about that for a second. So it's looking like, and this again, speaking of the Red Gaming Tech video I watched today, uh, he is listening to sources in at AMD saying that they're actually not 100% set on their pricing right now. They're still uh, kinda up in the air. Their original thoughts were to undercut Nvidia, but not massively, but noticeably. Uh, his suggestion in that video was like, throwing a ballpark number out there of like maybe 650 instead of 700 for their 3080 comp competitor. I think that AMD will come down around there, even if currently they are still thinking about it. So apparently they're actually maybe a little bit surprised with how well their cards are lining up against Nvidia at the high end right now. So there's maybe some doubts on whether they should undercut the price so much. Well, I think they still need to. And again, this is coming down to my personal speculation and opinions here, but hear me out. They do have to deal with the fact that Nvidia has a huge amount of the market share right now. And a lot of people are going to think brand loyalty. So if somebody owns an NVIDIA card right now and wants to upgrade, most of them, if they've been happy with their NVIDIA experience, which most people have been, their drivers are really good, speaking of another thing that NVIDIA has the advantage on. So they're probably going to think about NVIDIA first. So AMD has to convince people that they should switch, whereas NVIDIA just has to keep their loyal customers. And again, this is saying if supply is not an issue. So I think AMD is gonna have a huge advantage in terms of supply, at least initially. Anyway, I don't wanna get sidetracked here. So, so again, speaking of price, I think AMD should at least slightly undercut Nvidia's prices on their competitive cards because they have to win over market share from Nvidia that Nvidia currently has loyal customers in. And AMD is up against the fact that their graphic uh, graphics drivers are known to be worse than Nvidia's. And Nvidia has a lot of other features that AMD is struggling to compete with, like ray tracing and DLSS. And Nvidia has a lot of things that help out streamers, like their shadow play stuff, their NVENC video encoders, things like that. So there are a lot of things that Nvidia has other than just the straight up rasterized gaming performance where um, AMD is gonna have to give people a reason in addition to the rasterized gaming performance to actually make that switch. And I think just undercutting price is gonna be the most obvious <laughs> way to do that. So my thought is that they will undercut Nvidia's prices, but not by much. There's a chance I think they could come in even but I think that that would be a mistake because then watch Nvidia drop prices by 50 bucks, even on paper, because remember if Nvidia doesn't even have a supply of cards to sell, they could just like on paper say, yeah, the 3080 costs 649 and they're not even selling any, but, but, but now AMD is suddenly gonna have to deal with the fact that people are like, wait, hold on a minute, maybe I shouldn't buy an AMD card. Nvidia just lowered their prices, right? So I think they really need to be careful uh, with coming in even or above Nvidia because that gives Nvidia a lot more room to uh, wiggle around and, and uh, play with their pricing. Anyway, so again, that's pure speculation on my part, but I think they're gonna be coming in just slightly under competitive Nvidia. Video cards. The last thing I want to talk about is like, should DLSS matter to you? Because I already have a video on that a while back, which was the number one thing I wanted to see from AMD at their reveal is how they plan on competing with DLSS. And I've been trying to research that even more. And um, actually Red Gaming Tech in his video today mentioned he's been trying to research that as well. And I think we both come to the same conclusions, which is it's looking like AMD uh, does have a uh, upsampling competitor to DLSS, but it's not going to be as hardware accelerated. Um, and it's going to be mostly implemented through their drivers. And those drivers are not, not probably ready for launch, uh, which means that we could be seeing it more in like December or January. And unfortunately, um, that could impact, you know, the launch reviews and things like that for uh, AMD. But if you're willing to wait, it sounds like you will probably be getting some kind of a DLSS competitor from AMD. But uh, it's probably not 
going to be quite as effective as DLSS. And I mean DLSS 2.0. I don't wanna go into this here, it's not the main purpose of this video, but DLSS 2.0 is really impressive. If you've actually used it yourself, you see that you get a massive performance jump when you enable it at a very minor visual loss. Now, if you've seen DLSS 1.0, you might be like, hey, wait, no, it's ugly, blurry mess. I agree, I didn't really like DLSS 1.0, but 2.0 was not an ugly, blurry mess for me when I tried it out. I mainly just noticed my performance went way up and I saw very little uh, visual difference when actually playing the game and not just pausing for screenshots to examine for differences. There's some minor visual artifacting, don't get me wrong, but it's a it, it, it's really cool. Um, however, not every game supports DLSS, so that's probably should also not be a major deciding factor for you. This video is getting pretty long here. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about all this in the comments. Which card are you planning on getting? How long are you gonna wait to see how all this plays out? Are you gonna be sitting there on launch day for the 3070? Are you gonna be holding off to see what AMD uh, comes up with? And if you've made it this far in the video, you should consider hitting the subscribe button. You should definitely hit the like button and talk to me in the comments. That's one of the things I've been really enjoying about starting up the YouTube channel is I get to hear all of you guys talking in the comments about your thoughts on all of this. And that's been a lot of fun. I hope you guys have an excellent day.